is happening guys it is Daniel's 1989 welcome back to the Hereford United career this is episode 51 and the first game of the Premier League we have West Ham in the first game of the Premier League as you guys know we strengthened our starting 11 with the likes of Tyron Mings coming into the club the biggest signing of the well the club's history so far obviously brought Kolasinac in on a free um, we also brought in Dembele um, to switch out with Fernandez on the right hand side we also brought Lockin to be a backup right back and I'm not sure yet about this decision I've contemplated on putting uh, best in the cam position now and swapping him out for Wall as Wall did go up quite a lot last season but just for me not enough so I'm going to swap these two round as best has only got two weeks before he is a cam and I'm going to try best obviously to switch out for O'Reilly when necessary but something tells me that the transfer window is not quite done yet because even though I'm happy with the way the squad is do I think it can survive in the Premier League I still think we need to strengthen a little bit so looking where we are financially yes we took a bit of a hit on profit but we still have quite a lot of our budget as you can see we still have around 35 million to play with so let's see how this first game goes against West Ham and if we need to strengthen any work we have the money to do so so for the first time in the Premier League or in the club's history at Premier League level to the Edgar Street Stadium here we are then guys Edgar Street Stadium for the first played game of the club's history at Premier League level we have West Ham today which is certainly going to be no pushover West Ham a very very well rounded and solid Premier League side as you can tell by the background now guys I've changed the stadium colour to black instead of white I think it looks really nice just adding a new effect to the stadium I've changed the grass as well and you get a good look at our new home kit as well so with the likes of obviously the uh, Tyron Mings that you can see we've added to the squad with strength I just hope that we get off to a good start defensively we've improved we were brilliant at the end of last season I want to kick on at the start of this season and really push and show what show the other teams what we're all about so our lineup Josh Griffiths in goal Paslak, Mings, Hurst and Kolasinac in defence Adam, O'Reilly and Amadou in midfield Fernandez, Kirk Wilson, Anthony in the attacking positions. That's how we line up for our first Premier League game of the season. And we'll have a look how West Ham line up as well. As you can see, Mignolet in goal there. Must be getting on now in this save, Mignolet, as we've gone through a few seasons now. So we must be getting on. Might go in our advantage. So as you can see here, this is how they're going to line up. They've still got Masuaku in the left back position. Maximilian Arnold there in the lineup in midfield. And I think that's their new signing, the striker. So certainly going to be no pushover. And Ben Rama is still on the bench, I can see there as well. So still West Ham looking ish, but obviously new faces in the team. So, like I said, I want to kick on and show everybody else in the league what we are here for and what we're all about. Let's get straight into the football. Here's Amadou in midfield and towards Kirk Wilson. I'm just going to try and ping Fernandez in behind here. It wasn't the pass we were looking for, but Paslak does pick up the ball. If he can get it round towards Fernandez, just try and get some fast feet here with Fernandez if he can create some room to try and get across him, which he can now. The ball comes in towards the back post. It's Kalasinac there, and he's lashed at it and put it over the top of the bar. But Fernandez has won this ball here, and he is sprinting towards the West Ham goal and um, is that Anthony getting in the box there I can see Anthony is in the box down to Kirk Wilson can we get a shot away and don't tell me we have a penalty I think we have a penalty okay it, I think it hit an arm I mean we're at home the first Premier League game of the season I am not going to complain I am going to take it past like with the chance to score our first Premier League goal. I'm going to go left. Pass like to score the first goal of the season. And he does. I didn't think the first goal of the season would come by a penalty. But we will take it. Early in this game here against West Ham. We have gotten a penalty. 
and Paslak is the first goal scorer of our Premier League season lashing that into the goal really good penalty and it's game on possession in midfield here by West Ham passing the ball around well here and we're going to drag centre back out of position and he gets the shot in he's hit the crossbar that was so close to conceding and almost getting level in this game but we could be on a bit of a counter attack here with Super Kirk Wilson looking for Fernandez out wide can he get there Fernandez he, do, he might get there he gets the shot away and he's dragged it wide not long till half time now we just need to see this out here's Amadou looking to get a tackle in as well but he doesn't get the ball around the corner we can't let him turn here Hurst gets a good tackle in and Amadou almost took the man down there but thankfully it didn't come off half time looming we need to get this away and thankfully Griffiths catches and there goes half time into the second half we go guys and West Ham were certainly better on the ball they had 60% of the possession in that half West Ham pressing here in the second half they've won themselves a corner corner to come in he goes towards the edge of the box looking to work something into the box maybe and here they come in midfield very very well drilled passing they just find feet with every single pass as you can tell just passing round me like a dream off the crossbar again and finally they do hit the back of the net with the rebound to be honest that hit first time should have been the equaliser because it was one hell of a hit we'll just have a look here did it actually cross the line? I don't think it did it just bounced off the line and the man is first to react with the West Ham shirt getting the bicycle kick to finish it off and they get themselves level just making a couple of changes here guys Amadou and Fernandez off and I've put Doyle and new signing Dembele on Classic it actually I've got the ball in and around here and West Ham are really sitting with this last five minutes or so here and I can't find a gap through here is Anthony around the corner to Kolasinac I might have got through here the cross comes in and it's headed away there's not long left in this game I was trying to push that with O'Reilly and push the wrong way but West Ham look like they're going to push up the field now but Anthony intercepts that well here's Kolasinac drop this to Doyle over towards Adam and Adam be careful he doesn't lose possession he does really well into O'Reilly Kirk Wilson I'm going to give this back to O'Reilly if I can try and get a shot off he does get a shot off and the keeper has picked it up and that's probably going to be the end of the game now it's probably oh, it's just I'm going to say he's just put that right out in front of Kirk Wilson he was quick enough to react there but never mind guys the first game of the Premier League at the Edgar Street Stadium is a 1-1 draw back at the menu then guys and we get the penalty in the first half, which <clears throat> pass like converts, as you can see here. And then, obviously, they get the equaliser in the second half. So, a draw on the first game of the season. As you can see, we were literally the first game of the season, as West Ham are in first and we're in second. So, what I'm going to do, guys, is I noticed in midfield, we seem to be lacking that cutting edge pass. Now, I know I was said I wanted to splash out on the cash and bring somebody in. Now, I have genuinely thought about it and thought there's somebody that I do want to bring in. I've also got a couple of people on the list here that I'm waiting for script reports um, to come back. So, I'll get onto those later. But, I really want to bring in Conor Gallagher to go next to Amadou in midfield. Adam was brilliant <clears throat> at championship level. We are on a different level of quality now. And I think Conor Gallagher could be the man to do it. He is a little bit expensive but we do have enough to splash out and bring him in and his wage isn't that bad so having said that I'm going to go and try and bring him in and here he is guys the most expensive signing of the entire series so far 26 million pound Conor Gallagher is now a Hereford United player he was very expensive 45 grand in wages he wanted crucial he has signed a five-year deal though but I think he's going to make the difference. So what I am going to do is I am going to put Conor Gallagher in the cam position from now on. And I'm going to swap O'Reilly into the centre defensive mid position. Because I think that he will be stronger there. But Conor Gallagher's finishing, I think he's going to make the difference in midfield. So as I said, Conor Gallagher, welcome to Hurryford United. Some more transfer news for you guys. Adams has sold now. He has gone and he's made his way out of the club. We also have a bid for Anthony. 
Now, Anthony is our starting left winger, but I'm tempted to get rid of Anthony because we did get him on a free. So if we can get some better money for him, I'm tempted to bring in Rodriguez, who I think is a little bit more influential on that left-hand side, and then bring in another left winger as either a starter or maybe even further. So I'll ask for seven, and then anything over 625, if they offer me anything between there, then they can have Anthony. And it doesn't look that like that deal's going to go through, guys. They don't want to pay that much for Anthony, so he's staying where he is for now. And also, as you can see, we have Arsenal in the next game. Really not expecting anything at Arsenal whatsoever. We struggled against West Ham. We only got the point, really, because of the penalty. So I'm really not expecting any points here. But I'm hoping Conor Gallagher, the new signing, can really show us what he's about. So, fingers crossed, we'll at least get a draw at Arsenal, but I'm expecting a loss here. Here we are then, away at Arsenal, guys. This is going to be probably a whitewash, if I'm being honest. I can't really see us getting any points here at Arsenal, seeing as in Arsenal are pretty much what you'd like to consider one of the top six in the Premier League. So... Let's see how we get on here at the Emirates Stadium. And if anything, we're wearing our new kit today. So that's all I can say as a positive thing. We've got our new away kit on, which I really, really like. So obviously I put Arsenal in their uh, away kit, in their yellow kit, because obviously their home kit is red and white. It would have been a bit of a clash. So I've put us in our away kit today, which I really, really like. I really do like the smaller stripes on the Nike shirt. Really nice. But... This is how Arsenal will line up. Got Kurt Zuma in defence though. Jordi Alba a left back as well. And Chiesa up top. Odegaard in the camp position. They've just got such a strong team. A couple of names that I don't recognise. Suchek in midfield. But yeah, I'm really not expecting any points here. But we have new signing Conor Gallagher in the team today. There he is, the number 10 man. I've swapped Conor Gallagher and O'Reilly around. So as we stand up, Griffiths in goal. Paslak, Mings, Hurst and Kolasinac, who's playing against his old club. O'Reilly, Gallagher and Amadou in midfield. Fernandez, Kirk Wilson and Dembele in today. So obviously instead of putting... Anthony and I'm going to try Dembele out wide on the other side and give him a go I think this is going to be our new strongest starting lineup so like I said not expecting anything but here we go there's Amadou in midfield over towards new signer Conor Gallagher in towards O'Reilly just going to look for the ball down the line here towards pass like decent passing I'll use O'Reilly again like I said the cutting edge pass in the middle as you can see right there over to Dembele try and get an early shot away with Dembele caught by the goalkeeper Arsenal pressing forward here it's a nice pass out wide looking for players in the middle and Amadou was tracking over but Mings should be able to pressure this out which he does well there it's exactly why we brought him in for these one-on-one -on -one situations where he's just a little bit stronger and he can deal with the type of strikers we're going to come up against in the Premier League but here he goes again Tyron Mings pushing over again can he get another block in he does get another excellent tackling and I think we've got advantage here we'll Try and push forward with this. Fernandez, quick one two with Conor Gallagher here. Much better passing in midfield. And I'm going to drop this into O'Reilly if I can. It's gone to Conor Gallagher. One more around the corner to Amadou. Try and get a shot away. And Amadou has dragged that so far over. It went in the stand. Again, Arsenal with some decent possession in midfield. And a burst of pace there. And he's done. Fernandez and Paslak having to track back. And he gets the ball around the corner. A shot one two again. Paslak needs to get back in position and they get the ball at the edge of the box here we've got players in and around we've got a strong line here just need to hold it they get the shot away and again Griffiths comes to our aid we've not had a bad first half to be honest in this game we have had a couple of half chances but they have had chances too let's see if they're going to think they're going to go short with this we're pushing Fernandez as quick as I possibly can and they're taking the time here and Odegaard sending it right back Taking the time, maybe something off the training ground here, take it back to go forward maybe, I'm not sure, but there's only one minute added on and we need to just get a block in here if we can and thankfully Griffiths has made the save again. I said at the start of the season that we wasn't going to bring in a higher rated goalkeeper because obviously Griffiths did such a good job at championship level 
and he is proving that he is the man for the Premier League level as well. Shouldn't be long left if we get rid of this and that's probably going to be half time guys. There we go. Into the second half we go guys and to my surprise really I think we just edged it. Not for possession, Arsenal were certainly better with possession and with the ball but creating chances and getting through on goal I think we just edged it much better in midfield with the new the new signing Conor Gallagher and with a stroke of luck if we can get in we might be able to create something in this game here is a pass towards Kurt Wilson and absolutely chopped down though Kurt Wilson and he's got a red card Kurt Zuma has been sent off early in the second half here that might be the key for us to win this game that is an awful challenge on Kurt Wilson and Kurt Zuma receives a red card can we try and create something from the free kick early in this second half here there's no point shooting um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna pass it out but I'm gonna send it I'm gonna give it to O'Reilly because obviously O'Reilly's the free man on the edge then look towards Conor Gallagher try and give it to Fernandez around the corner get a short snappy pass away or shot away should I say and it's a good save by the goalkeeper let's try and send this in 10 men Arsenal we should be able to get a result here I'm just gonna send this back over to the corner and he's offside there's a new signing, Conor Gallagher, running forward here. Just going to try and play this in towards Amadou. I'm trying to make the extra man count, as you can see. I'm passing it around, looking for the angle. Here's Conor Gallagher again in towards Amadou. Going to try and get this to Kirk Wilson around the corner. He turns, he gets his effort away, and Kirk Wilson has missed. I'm going to bring Rodriguez on, guys, and see if he can have some influence. Just make this substitution. They're also making a substitution. So Fernandez off, Rodriguez on. Again, Arsenal bringing the ball away. They are trying to do everything they possibly can, even with 10 men, to try and find a goal here. And he's rolled away from Tyra Mings, and they have scored. 86 minutes gone, and 10 men, Arsenal, have found a way to beat us. Even with 10 men, we can't find the back of the net. We have had some chances. We've just ended up wasting them. We haven't taken our chances and Harvey Barnes has come off the bench for Arsenal and made it 1-0. There's not long left here guys, I will just play it out from here and try and see if I can get an equaliser before the end of the game. They have got 10 men but we still struggle to break them down. Can Kirk Wilson finally get through on goal? He can't, it's another good tackle. They've had some strong tackles, obviously the Kurt, Wil uh, the Kurt Zuma chance was just absolutely horrendous, but they have had some good tackles in. Is this the chance now? Here's Kurt Wilson, Rodriguez is making me a decent run. Rodriguez, this has got to be the moment for the equaliser. Rodriguez, the goalkeeper saved it, I don't believe it. It was a tame shot from Rodriguez, he gets through finally. He hits it and he's just, he's hit it so lightly, he's just tried to curl it in or pass it in and he hasn't finished it. We need... Tyron Mings' his head right now to get on that and try and create as a chance. Conor Gallagher can't get to it. Four minutes added on, two of the four gone. And it doesn't look like we are going to get anything from this game. I'm trying to just push anybody onto the ball. Kirk Wilson trying to tap the goalkeeper. He's headed it. He's hit it clear, but back at the menu then, guys. And absolutely disappointed with that. That was a golden chance to get three points off one of the top six that we didn't take. We had our chances, we just couldn't finish. And after two games, we haven't actually scored a, a goal in play yet. We took a penalty in the last game and we didn't score in that game. But you've got to say it was a great save by the goalkeeper. If Rodriguez had just hit it with some power, we'd have got the result there, or at least got a draw. But it hasn't worked out that way. So we have um, Norwich in the cup next. And then obviously the third game, of this episode will be against is Aston Villa. Aston Villa. So we obviously took Tyron Mings off Aston Villa, but with a draw and a loss in this episode, we have got to get a win at Aston Villa. So I will simulate forward, we will simulate the Norwich game, and then we'll move on to Aston Villa. EFL Cup guys against Norwich. I am going to simulate this game. As you can see, I've completely swapped around the starting 11 just to give everybody a bit of game time. We want to concentrate on the Premier League and surviving in the Premier League. As you can tell by the last game against Arsenal, we've got to be taking those chances if we're going to survive in the Premier League. So let's simulate this game and 
even if we get a result against Norwich, that would be brilliant. Just some game time. We actually beat Norwich with our second team. Doyle gets the first goal and Rodriguez gets the winner in the 78th minute. So very, very surprised at that. It just goes to show you that the obviously the lower end teams, we do have the capabilities of beating them. If anything, I think I just need to be better with my finishing. So we have Aston Villa in the last game, but I think before then we will have to, oh no, we won't. We'll play the game and then we'll have to do transfer deadline day. Some transfer news for you guys as well. So Wall has actually had a loan bid, which I'm quite happy for Wall to go out on loan. Cause obviously, as we said, I don't think he's going to get game time because he's just not good enough. So it is a loan to buy. I'll just delegate and make that a, a loan for one year and hopefully that they will accept. We also had a bid for our left back bail. Now he is our backup left back and to be honest, what I'm tempted to do is I'm tempted to try and get the money for Bale and recall Thomas from his loan just to make some extra cash. So he's not valued very highly, um, Bale, but if I can get four and a half for him and then anything in between, I will genuinely consider selling him and then I will recall Thomas from his loan spell. So as you can see, I'll just show you quickly, get rid of those. As you can see in the squad, in that left back position, Thomas was a great player when we used him, but he's actually grown to 71 rated now. So if um, if Bale sells, obviously if he goes and the move to Fenerbahce goes through, I will recall Thomas to be our backup. Scout reports are back in, guys. Now, I wanted to have a look at these two strikers. Now, they're not as highly rated as I thought they would be. I was going to look at maybe bringing either a first-team striker in or a backup striker to go behind Kirk Wilson, but these two are just not going to be the guys to do it, to be honest. So I'm going to go ahead and remove them. I might have another look for another striker and see if we can pick one up. But... Miranda is somebody that I am very interested in and he is on the transfer list. He's actually been transfer listed. 18 years old, 73 rated and is not valued that high at all. So I'm just going to have another look on the transfer window and see, or the transfer list and see if there's anybody more suitable because defence isn't really the problem but we haven't got much left, only around £12 million. So... I'm going to have another quick look on the transfer list and see if I can find anybody suitable to bring in. 35-year-old Abamyang, even at 80 rated, would be a huge signing for us. Bayern Munich have added him to the transfer list. They clearly don't want him or they think he's not good enough to be there. Well... That leaves us with a huge decision. I don't think we have enough money to bring him in just yet. But if the deal goes through with Bale and we get a little bit of extra money, we might have enough money to bring in Abamyang. 35 years old, well within our reach to do. We're a Premier League side now, obviously. He's in the German League. Bring him back to the Premier League. And he is an absolute goal scoring machine. Even at 35 year old, he will still bang him in. I'm going to simulate forward. And if I hopefully get that bail deal done, I am going to try and bring in Abamyang. Bear with. Simulated forward, guys. And Wall, uh, the deal has gone through with Wall. So he is going out on loan for this season. And I am just waiting for um, Bale to come back react in fact they have oh that's retract sorry it's ongoing at the minute it looks like it's going to come through but it's not come through just yet we might just have enough to bring in Abamyang and also Bestie's um, position has changed to a cam now so he, hopefully he will be more useful in the squad now at cam I'm going to change him to a dynamo so his pace goes up and everything but I'll simulate forward guys and hopefully we will get this deal done. I've simulated forward guys and we've ended up at the Aston Villa game so we will have to play this before we find out what's going to happen with this transfer business with the transfer window obviously transfer deadline date looming ahead of us so to the Edgar Street Stadium.
Edgar Street Stadium guys we are at home for the third game of the episode and we haven't had a win yet in this episode so with a draw in the first game and a loss in the second game I'd really like to get a win against Aston Villa at home here as you can see we're in our change kit just because of the kit clash but we have another predicament if you look at Aston Villa's lineup, you will see somebody that you should recognise because I certainly recognise him and I'm sure you guys know who I'm talking about and I am really hoping that he will not be the difference between the two teams today if that comes back to bite us yeah, I'm really not going to be happy about it so I'll wait for Aston Villa's lineup to come up and you will certainly see who it is so how we line up Griffiths in goal Paslak, Mings, Hurst and Kolesinac in defence. We've got O'Reilly, Gallagher and Amadou in midfield. Fernandez, Wilson and Dembele up top. I'm really hoping for three points. We've got a strong enough squad now. We've got some real household names in the, the team. So I'm hoping it's going to be enough. And as you will see here from Aston Villa's lineup, I'm sure you already know who I'm talking about. So Aston Villa as they line up. Martinez in goal uh, Eric Garcia at centre-back he's a decent centre-back um, Sigurdsson there in midfield and as you saw Leon Morley is in their midfield Ings up front as well they have a very very strong team and just for your curiosity guys before I start the game I will pause it and we'll have a look at how high Leon Morley has gone up in rating he was 81 when he left us so let's go across to the other team and find Leon Morley he is 85 rated 85 rated Leon Morley and the rest of the squad is what we're up against it's a lovely lofted ball out to Kolasinac and he's over committed though the full back and that has allowed Dembele to get in here in towards Amadou to try and send this round the corner to Kirk Wilson who has turned on the inside really well Kirk Wilson he's missed it again Another golden chance for Kirk Wilson, who was in brilliant form before joining the Premier League. He's just not doing the business. Free kick to Aston Villa for offside here, guys. Tried to get Dembele in, and he's actually give that to Dembele. He just went to run off. His first touch was terrible. We might be able to get Conor Gallagher in behind here. Can Conor Gallagher get a shot away? He can, and he's hit the bottom corner. Conor Gallagher has put us 1-0 in front with a soup. Herb finish here at the Edgar Street Stadium at home we've had a loss and a draw in this episode so far I'm really hoping for a win here and Conor Gallagher gets some room he hits that beautifully and Martinez can't get the we are 1-0 in front and that's good chasing back by Paslak shutting that situation down long ball over to Kolasinac in a lot of space here going to try and find Dembele down the wing but it's ricocheted away, he does get it to Dembele and Dembele has given the ball away, not much time before half time and Leon Morley puts a wonderful ball in to his teammate out wide and we don't want to concede just before half time, get Leon Morley off the ball please, we don't want that situation to occur, here he is he's turned and Mings blocks him out of it and that's probably going to be and is half time into the second half guys and Conor Gallagher puts us 1-0 ahead and I think we've just edged it in that first half we have had the better first half we need to have a brilliant second half I need a second goal it's a decent pass here and Aston Villa could be on some sort of a counter attack and Hurst should shut that down he does nicely showed too much of it to Hurst there if I can get that into Amadou try and go around the corner to Conor Gallagher and as you can tell, very much a midfield battle, but Leon Marley has set his teammate on the way here. Try and shut this down with Paslak. And you get the ball in and around shot, and he has hit the top corner. 78 minutes gone, and it's Danny Ings. Obviously, nobody else can hit a ball that sweet. I'm going to have to take Mings off and put Alfonsi on by the looks of things, but they are back in it at 1-1. Danny Ings outside the box, finds the top corner, it's 1-1. Three minutes added on guys and there's already two of the three being. It's looking like it's going to be a 1-1 draw unless we can get this ball forward now with the slimmest amount of time left but never mind the referee has blown 
and it's another draft. Here we are back at the menu then guys and Conor Gallagher gets us in front in the first half as you can see on screen there. We have a brilliant first half and then it just fell apart in the second half. We couldn't keep them out. They got the goal and we got ourselves a point. So two draws and a loss in the first three games of the Premier League. It's not the worst start. It could have been a lot worse, but we do need to start picking up some wins. So as I've said, guys, we have possibly a deal going through with Aubameyang if we can raise the money. So I'll simulate forward and fingers crossed we can raise the money and bring in Aubameyang. We have got some transfer news, guys, but it doesn't look like anything I'm going to be interested in. Marseille have offered me a 25-year-old cam at 73 rated plus money for Josh Griffiths. Not going to happen. Somebody has come in for Sam Gallagher, guys. It's not going to be enough, but it's a start. If we can accept that and sell Sam Gallagher and then hopefully somebody else will sell... We might just scrape enough to bring in Abamyang. And another transfer has come in, guys. Another transfer has come in for Anthony. Just over, or just under, should I say, 4 million. So if I go ahead and accept that and those two sell, that should just raise enough to bring in Abamyang. We shall see. Let's see if they sell first. Gallagher has sold, guys. Signs are positive. Let's see how much money. Anthony has also sold guys it's looking good let's just have a look at how much money with four hours remaining in transfer window let us have a look at how much we have we have just under 17 or just yeah just under 17 million he is going to want probably a decent bit of wage but with four hours remaining I am going to try my utmost to negotiate with Bayern Munich to bring him in fingers crossed guys we can with four hours left in the transfer window guys on transfer deadline day Aubameyang is a Hereford United player I actually I, I went to them I offered them a straight 10 million they came back with 17 I offered 14 and a half they accepted I offered him a straight 50k with crucial football and he accepted. Not only have we brought in Tyron Mings, not only have we brought in Conor Gallagher in this window, we have now brought in, yes, 35-year-old, but we have brought in Abamyang, one of probably the most prolific strikers in the, the past few seasons in the Premier League. He is now a Hereford United player with four hours left on transfer deadline day. <sighs> Somebody pinch me, please into the final hour of the transfer window guys as you can see I, st I still can't get over it Abamyang is a hurry for United player this is going to turn our season around so as you can see transfer window or transfer deadline day has passed now and uh, what's this here from Rodriguez uh, yeah well yeah we definitely should have won against Aston Villa but you know it happens uh, let's get rid of that. Let's just have a quick look. This is um, the youngster in the uh, youth academy. We don't need to worry about that. What we do need to worry about is showing you the biggest transfers of this window. I don't care whether it was 14.5 million. We've had the biggest transfer of the window because we brought in a Bamiyang. 35 years old or not, what a signing. So, Dybala has moved from Juventus to, uh, I think that's, is that the unlicensed Atalanta? Or is it... I think that's the unlicensed Atalanta anyway. Pretty positive. Let's have a look and see if there's any other big ones we need to tell you about. Drew Bellingham going to Crystal Palace, guys. From Real Sociedad to Crystal Palace. Uh, Fabinho going to Barcelona for 75 and a half, oh, 74 and a half million. Um, any other big ones? Mason Greenwood making his way to Atletico Madrid. Calvin Phillips leaving Leeds and going to Tottenham. Any other big ones? Rodrigo, they're going to PSG from Real Madrid. Um, big move there, moving away from West Ham. Carrera moving into Lille. Jack Grealish has moved from Manchester City, guys, to Real Madrid. That is a massive move there, almost £60 million. And so check to Arsenal, we knew that anyway from playing them. Uh, Gomez has gone from Real Madrid to 
Um, Bayern Munich, is there any other really that stands out? Let's have a quick look. I don't think there's any others really that stand out that I know. Anyway, there might be one or two that you guys have seen. Um, but yeah, doesn't look like there's much there. Lafont going to uh, Borussia Dortmund, good goalkeeper. Lafont, I've had him in previous FIFAs. Uh, Guanduzzi going to Hoffenheim from Arsenal. And that's your roundup, guys. So not many massive ones. But we've just brought in a Bamiang, so yeah, I'm really not fussed. <laughs> so guys, I will end on a high note. Don't miss out on the next episode. Yes, we've only got two points, but we are sat in 14th for now, so it's not the worst case scenario. We are going to turn it round in the next episode. A Bamiang is in. I am absolutely over the moon with that signing and I can't wait to get him in the first team. So drop me a big thumbs up, guys. Apologies if the episode goes on for a little bit longer than it should, but make sure you don't miss out on the next episode. Drop me a big thumbs up. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. Keep tuning in to the Hurryford United career. It's been Donnellas1989. Love you, bye.